Hello everyone, my name is Legend Rani and this game is Rise of Kingdoms. This is Archer Mastery Class. Or Master Class. Alright, I'm gonna get straight on to it. If you didn't know, I've started like a Master Class series of video. And uh, now is Archer's time. Do apologize about that. I don't really, I don't really need them. Um, right. First thing that you need to know is because I'm gonna talk about legendary and epic. So first thing that you need to know about commanders in general is that the talents only work from the main commander. It applies to the second in command and your army, but it only works from the main one. So this is something that is very very important for you to know. The couple of things that you also need to know is how expensive it is to upgrade legendary commanders in terms of stars and in terms of sculptures. So the total amount of sculptures that you need for your legendary commanders is 690 and the total amount you need for your epic commanders is 440 and then you have the star cost. The star cost is approximately. I recommend around 450 for legendary stars. The amount of stars that is displayed over there is the regular stars. So it's not the bundle of stars, it's not the special stars, it's the normal legendary stars same is for the epic ones it's just the normal one this is how the math is done for these particular stars now another thing that i can say about the legendary commanders recommended is that you keep them at one star until you max out their first skill the first skill on any legendary commander is the most strong skill they have uh, some of them preferably is to keep them at two stars and max out the second skill as well but that all depends on how fast can you obtain legendary sculptures or your patience for example if i go to ysg ysg is also one of the commanders that i would suggest to keep him at, se at second star until you max out the second skill is because you get a hundred percent attack bonus on your archers when this skill is going to trigger and a hundred percent rage so that is pretty significant when you have a full archer army or when you have a full archer rally so i would definitely definitely keep him at second star max out his second skill and then probably proceed with the others the third one is garrison and the fourth one is skill damage okay so let's go forward how about some pairings or how about some talents should we start talk about pairings first or talents right now I'm just gonna show you the talents that actually works for all the archers. Now the reason I'm saying all the archer commanders is because they all have skill and archer or archer and skill. So all the archer commanders that you wanna go to, Elsid, archer and skill, uh, you go to Herman, I have it summoned that, archer and skill. You go to Kusunoki, I haven't summoned him, Archer and Skill, so any Archer commander they have Archer and Skill. Some exceptions would be Mark's Woman, which is not recommended to use, her skill are very very low, so I wouldn't advise you to use or invest in Mark's Woman, and same is Tomoe Gozen. She has Archer and Attack, but I don't advise you to use her especially not as main commander the reason why is because reduce the current tar target's damage and i think it's this one grants increase skill damage when serving as secondary commander so to if you want to benefit from tomoe gozen and tomoe gozen she is very useful at the beginning so at the beginning i would actually say that tomoe gozen has a little bit of utility but like a month into the game she because she drops drastically like like really really drastically and she becomes useless so my advice is not bother with max woman or tomoe gozen don't bother investing in them uh, it's just not gonna worth it so that's why any archer commander that there is out there that is worth investing in they have archer and skill so let me just pop in the talent now the talent build is done on El Cid, but as I mentioned, every archer that is actually worth investing in, they have archer and and uh, skill. 
So this is the build that I'm recommending. I named it the Talent Build to Defeat Infantry. Well, people have defeated infantry with other talent builds. It's just I like this one the most. And why I like this one the most, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna talk about it. The first thing that I have to say is the one question that everyone was asking me, how does my archer move as fast as some cavalry? Like how can my archers move that fast? So I'm gonna answer that question as well. How can my archers actually be <coughs> that mobile? Which is very very important. You guys have no idea how much march speed plays a very important role. Because the faster you move there, even if you lose, the faster you recover back and the faster you, you can go back into the battlefield. So that's why I'm a very very high fan of march speed. Because you can the recovery is much faster for you you also get faster into the battlefield you get a faster home and at the same time you deliver damage and all the important stuff that you need to do on the battlefield either reinforce a rally or for whatever reason right yo so now you've seen the talent build and let's just go ahead and talk a little bit about the talent build i have herman so i can go on to his talents and we can talk about so the only thing that i don't have from the archers is the whistling arrows and i don't have razor sharp but i have this particular defense i have two points in it which if you actually consider it you can remove this one point in defense and just go into razor sharp the main reason why i've done the build like this and i put the two points in defense because i was trying to get as much stats as possible on my archers so if you check the build and then you check the archer and the skill talents i'm actually covering as much stats as possible on the archers so those two points from defense they can actually go on the razor sharp or they can go on whistling arrows it's entirely up to you now you're probably wondering why I haven't went for Whistling Arrows. Why I didn't do that? Because increase all damage dealt by 25%, which is all damage, which is quite significant. That's for two turns. Well, first of all, it has a 10% chance to trigger. So 10% chance to trigger. What are the chances that it will trigger that often? It's pretty low. One second. It's only for two seconds. Increase all damage to benefit the most from the whistling arrows You need to use a skill. So what is the chance that it will actually proc and Then it will actually proc uh, When it's your casting a skill so you can actually benefit from the all damage because if you're not gonna cast a skill the all damage it's pretty irrelevant. I don't think that whistling arrow deserves five time points for a two seconds 25% uh, all damage just that is just my idea this is just my point of view now if you go on the other hand and what you gain is 6% march speed by not going on for whistling arrows and then you gain clarity so with clarity, after using an active skill, increase skill damage by 6% for the next 6 seconds. So that's going to be 6% skill damage guarantee, which is 100% you have it all the time. Because in those 6 seconds, uh, you know, the second commander is going to cast his skill and it's not going to take 6 seconds before, you, you, before you're going to cast again the main skill. So you're going to have that 6% skill damage all the time. Not to mention the march speed, which I was... I was uh, talking about it why I consider it so important again the two points from defense if you actually want if you're not happy with one uh, percent defense then you can definitely go for whistling arrow and you still have a 10% increase all damage or 100% more rage after each normal attack it's entirely it's entirely up to you it's entirely what do you think is is gonna benefit you the most i've done it with the defense because i wanted to go with stats stats and mobility on this particular build now the reason and how my archers are so fast well first of all my main account i'm with ottomans which grants me another five percent march speed 
Uh, I'm VIP 15, which is another 5% Mars speed. I have max research, which you guys should already know. Where is the research? It's over here. This is the academy. Let's go into the war, which you guys should know that maxing out the cartography, which the last point gives you 5% Mars speed. So in order to max out the cartography, you need to max out combat tactics, defensive formation and herbal medicine. So I had uh, that as well. And then if you go into the commanders, if you go to Herman, Herman also grants 10% Mars speed. That's why he's very nice commander, 10% Mars speed. And then if you go to the L seed, he also grants 15% Mars speed because I had L seed maxed out. So there you go, these two commanders, 25% Mars speed with that talent build, which is basically most of the Mars speed that you can get. And all that, my archers move all as fast as the cavalry or some cavalry. And probably even faster than some cavalry builds, which are not made for mobility. So that's how my archers were so fast. Is this build, Herman and Elsie, like the best build ever? Is it, is it like, you know, very strong or uh, the most utilized build? I would say is the most utilized build and I would say that it has and makes perfect sense to actually use this build because of the synergy of mobility. Is it the strongest one? Uh, not really. Not really. But the point of this build is to have very fast recovery. So you can get very fast into the battlefield, you lose, you lose, but in the end you can also choose which who you're gonna battle because you have archers, so obviously you don't wanna fight with two, three groups of calves, they'll just swarm you and you will just lose. So obviously you have a chance with mobility to actually choose the battle that you want or reinforce a rally or various other reasons. And if you lose, the troops will gonna go very fast to your city and then you can uh, attack again uh, very fast because you have the mobility so this is why I'm, I'm very fan of mobility when it comes to my builds this is why I'm always focusing so much on trying to make the most utility of the talent builds delivering damage in the same time while having a lot of mobility I just find it very very important in most of the situations obviously the best Archer the pair is YSG with LC. They are the only two legendaries. But are they actually the best ones? Well, it's debatable. The reason I'm saying is debatable is uh, because I have already tested them. Since on my main account YSG was maxed out, LC was, was maxed out. And I tested with Herman. And in my opinion, my personal opinion, I found that Herman with YSG has done a much better job in 1 vs 1. Now that was just 1 vs 1 again. 1 vs 1 is not the proper test of what a build can do or uh, if a build is actually good. There are situations and situations when builds perform much better uh, than uh, actually 1 vs 1. 1 vs 1 is just something to have an idea about your build for example one of my builds that i actually use which is my second archer build is julius caesar main commander with ysg a second in command in one versus one this build is not good so in one versus one i lost against infantry very very terrible the reason why is because this build is is for aoe so the way Julius Caesar as main commander with YSG as second in command and full archers, this is a build made for, made for AOE. AOE is area of effect, group damage. The build for Julius Caesar, I'm going to show it when I'm going to do the masterclass video for leadership commanders. Or if you want to call it a mixture of troops, which others said, but I will just call it uh, leadership commanders. So then, then, then is when I'm gonna show the build for Julius Caesar. So yeah, Julius Caesar and YSG is also a very good archer build that actually works. The reason why is because 
Julius Caesar with his main skill, it says over here, increase all damage by 30%. So by all damage, it also means the skill damage. So the skill damage from YSG is being boosted by another 30%. So there you go, it also increases attack and defense of the troops, which also uh, attack, you know, boost a little bit the nuke as well. So there you go, there is only benefits why Julius Caesar as main commander and uh, YSG as second in command is a good archer build. On the other hand, you can bring a lot more troops into the battlefield, which is 15% and with the talent, 18% more troops on the battlefield. So you go with approximately 340k archers so in either situation if you get swarmed you have like 340k archers if Julius Caesar is level 60 and you're definitely gonna wreak some havoc with your YSG having a lot of AOE damage <clears throat> now that was about legendary so that's uh, the builds that i would recommend for uh, for archer so you can go el cid uh, with ysg you can go herman with ysg you can go julius caesar with ysg you can go ysg with someone else if that you choose but whenever you use julius in a build julius always has to be the main commander that is like the main thing about julius if you use him as a second in command you're not benefiting as much from his main skill so that's that's why julius is a proper leadership he's a proper leader commander he needs to be the first <laughs> right now let's talk about some epic builds how about that because we have herman we already talked about the legendary ones but probably some of you want to know a couple of epic builds some of you are free to play now before I'm gonna get there, I have to mention that archers should never be your priority to focus on in terms of research and in terms of commanders. Unfortunately, is this is the truth. The reason why is because too many people focus on cavalry at the beginning and Miramoto, which is a very powerful nuker and cheap, and, you know, relatively cheap compared to. Uh, let's say the average spending on the game so it's a very cheap uh, legendary commander and for that reason your archers can get very easy terrorized it doesn't matter how much you invest in them so this is one of the reasons why archers should never be your main focus in the game uh, if you actually want to do that on your own choice herman is a very very good choice now the only second epic Archer commander is Kusunoki if you're not happy about this build as I was told by many that uh, It's not actually working as well or is not in damaging enough Even though Kusunoki is an Archer commander and I'm very very fond of his skills He has some very very good skills especially for garrison commander. I recommend Kusunoki You can go with Osman Osman and Herman, they have the highest damage factor on the main skill once you obtain the expertise. So, Herman and Osman. So, you can definitely go with just archers, Herman and Osman. Not to mention that you'll also be able to bring more archers into the battlefield if Osman is second in command. So, there's nothing wrong with that particular build. Herman and Osman. Herman first. Osman second in command and you can have a very powerful nuking archer setup then another option for your Herman is gonna be Boudica for the main reason very powerful nuke once you obtain the expertise 100 damage factor and then reduce the targets rage by a hundred and it's the same thing that Herman does as well rage reduction of the target up to a hundred so they make Herman and Boudica, they make a very important pair and also Herman and Boudica, they have an insane, insane utility in the Lost Kingdom. The reason why is because when you want to capture the objectives, they are very, very strong and you need to reduce their rage as much as possible. So Herman and Boudica, they actually play a much important role in the game or in Lost Kingdom. 
and you can think about it. So this is another build you can also work for your archers as free to play is Herman and Budica. Not to mention the force clear from Budica whenever it goes in, WTF to that. It's a lot of damage for your archers. So yeah, there you go. Herman and Budica. As a third option for Epic, which are not like highly fond about it, but you could also use John of Arc. The reason why is because the normal attack is increased, you know, passive by 25%. And then <clears throat> you have her main skill. Once you obtain his expertise, it's gonna last for 4 seconds, which is pretty significant, 4 seconds. And increase the Archer's attack bonus by 30%. It also does like buff, so it, it buffs your troops around you. So if you have cavalry and infantry around you and does some rage restoration. But it's particularly for archers is 30% attack. So if you have a full archer army, you know, Herman and John can actually, actually be really good. Uh, right, yo. Now, that's pretty much I have to say about archers. I mentioned about the legendary and I mentioned about the epic ones. You're probably wondering why I haven't mentioned about Frederick. Because Frederick is a leadership commander. He's a... Universal General Commander, which basically doesn't belong to any army and can be used in any. It is true, it is true, I'm just not so fond about Frederick. You can definitely use him if you have him or if you max him out, and I recommend to use him with Archers. But um, except his main skill and his core skill, there's nothing so crazy about Frederick, considering that he is a legendary. This is a city, and this is a healing with 10% with chance every 5 seconds. So that's a very rare chance of actually getting some healing. And the damage factor, 800, 100% is nothing crazy. I even seen him in a rally. So this is what I'm talking about. I've seen Frederick in a rally and I was not happy about his damage. I've seen many people using Frederick in a rally when sieging. So I was, I was, I was not happy about his damage, but definitely if you want to get the most out of your Frederick, if you max him out or if you have him, I will definitely use him with Archers. Mehmed is also a, a you know, leadership general commander. He would also be very, very good with Archers. So also I would only use him with Archers because he has skill damage, he has attack bonus, he has... Uh, a lot of uh, nuking on his main skill once he obtains his expertise. So it's also a commander that I will try to group him as much as possible with archers. But Magmed is a very rare situation because his most benefit is when rallying army, when rallying cities. So only when you rally cities, that's when Magmed actually excel the highest. That's that's the time when I would only use Magmed, and I would actually use him as a second in command. Well, I believe that's pretty much I have to say about Archers, and uh, again, just for the ending, I'm gonna show you the talent build again. So you see the two the two yellow points from the skill pad. That those are the two yellow points that you can, if you actually want, you can go on the whistling arrows. If that was the name, let, let me just make sure. I'm not spelling it wrong. Yeah, whistling arrows. So if you actually want, those two points can go on the whistling arrows. This would be like the only small modification I would do to this talent build. Until next time, this is your boy Legend Ronnie signing out. And I hope you do guys find this mastery class or master, master guides um, really helpful. Peace out, yo, and take care. See you guys on the next one.